In this video, I'm going to teach you how to calculate the change in entropy delta S for a phase change. A phase change is a process where we're undergoing some sort of change in state. For example, boiling, which is the situation in this problem, or freezing, or melting, or condensing, or sublimation, any one of those phase changes we're changing from one state of matter to another. In this problem, we're looking at HI. It is going from liquid to a gas, so this is boiling or vaporization, and we're being asked to calculate the entropy change for this particular process. The problem tells us that the boiling point is negative 35.4 degrees Celsius, and that just simply means that this reaction is taking place at that temperature. That's gonna be an important factor. So this is taking place at negative 35.4 degrees C. Now, normally when we're being asked to calculate the change in entropy for a particular reaction, the easiest way to do that is using Hess's law. Hess's law says that we can take the entropy of all of our products. We would look those up in some sort of data table and subtract from that the entropy of all the reactants and that would give us the overall entropy for the reaction. However, we can only use Hess's law when we are operating at 25 degrees C. In this case, because we're at negative 35.4 degrees C, we're not at 25 degrees C, which means that we're not in standard conditions. This means that we can't use Hess's law. When we can't use Hess's law, that is okay. There are other ways for us to calculate the change in entropy. The easiest way for us to do that is to use the delta G equation. Delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. This equation applies in standard conditions. It also applies to non-standard conditions as well. So that's the situation that we have right here. Now we know we're trying to calculate the delta S for this reaction. We know what the temperature is that's provided to us. And this problem also gives us the value of delta H. So we know this number as well. The only thing that we're not really sure about is delta G. However, the value of delta G is always zero for all situations where we are in equilibrium. Uh, and this includes phase changes. So anytime we're undergoing a phase change, the value of delta G is always equal to zero. If we're boiling, if we're melting, if we're freezing, if we're undergoing sublimation, the value of delta G is zero. And since we're undergoing a boiling process in this situation, delta G is equal to zero. So we don't even have to worry about what the value of delta G might be. It's just zero. That gives us delta H minus T delta S. And if we want to rearrange this equation a little bit, we could say T delta S equals delta H, and then rearrange it even more to isolate delta S, delta H, delta H, divided by T. We can plug in our value of delta H, which is 21.16 kilojoules per mole, and divide by the temperature. You've got to be careful. This temperature needs to be in Kelvin, not in degrees C. So we do a degrees C to Kelvin conversion, and we get 237.78. And this will give us 0 0.08899 units of joules per kilojoules per mole Kelvin.